For the first time, drivers will gain an international diploma. Another first is the interagency collaboration, something which is expected to happen with greater frequency. Joint training is believed to offer benefits such as cohesion among the essential services and the sharing of practices, and all at a saving to the taxpayer. The training consists of meeting the needs of the new high-speed driver training codes of practice as a driver and as an instructor and assessor. So they're, they're put through the driving course uh, to a high standard to meet the needs and then they're taught to teach the driving standards and then we move on to assessor skills to teach against the recognised UK high-speed driver training uh, codes of practice. Part of the training involves the drivers carrying out risk assessment and this will also have an impact on the response. But how much can a course of this nature improve standards that are actually noticeable on our roads? Well, the first thing to consider is, as a statutory, the emergency services, if you like, should be setting a very good example, whether under emergency conditions or at normal road speed. So initially, the course improves the advanced driving standards of the candidates, so it will improve road safety and give a good example to other road users. And secondly, it will reduce the road, uh, road collision accident risk by improving the techniques and, and terminology, the tactical use of emergency, quam, uh, emergency equipment, and in such a compact environment like Gibraltar, it's very important to use more tactical use of equipment and show more restraint because the roads are so narrow, we have a lot more motorcycles and scooters. Perhaps this is a pretty obvious question, but we've got two major agencies, as the ambulance and the RGP. Why haven't they been trained before? They've been on our roads. Yes, they have. So the ambulance service have previously done a, a BTEC in emergency ambulance driving, which was uh, another accreditation a number of years ago. And the police have already done uh, various emergency response training as well. But this new standard is meeting the needs of a new recognised uh, emergency response driver training codes of practice. Now this was developed, the new standards, and the gentleman that's here to audit was part of that group. It was, uh, the reason it was formed was because of, of the road traffic collisions in the UK between the police, the fire and the ambulance. So they've brought all the standards together from police, fire and ambulance and rewritten a whole no, new code of practice for drivers and instructors and assessors. So this is enhancing their current skills and giving them an accreditation uh, which will give them an international diploma at a high standard of, of training. Do some restraint, allowing them somewhere to pull in. Cancel the tones till we know it's safe to proceed past, and we'll reactivate the sirens when it's safe to do so. Okay. Is it safe to move opposing carriageway? Opposing carriageway. Okay. Have you gained a positive response? response going from that way. Okay. Looking ahead, being aware of the. You mentioned traffic congestion in Gibraltar. Has it been somewhat of a learning curve for you too? Uh, it's a challenge. <laughs> it's a manageable challenge. Um, you have to, to to drive and respond to the environment you're in. When we leave here, the next course will be in, in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia in two weeks, so you move the challenge to, 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 to fit the needs. So it's a very challenging environment, the roads are narrow, the, there's a lot of motorcyclists which come with, a, with their in, in own inherent problems with helmets, they may not hear sirens, you also, also may see motorcyclists with iPods in so they may not hear the sirens, so it's about managing the, 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 managing the situation and using the tactics of the emergency warning equipment and having good observational skills and forward planning. The course is a follow-up from training for the Gibraltar Airport Fire and Rescue Service, which needed improved skill sets to meet the new demands placed on it by civil aviation, after it was transferred from the MOD to the government.